don't know. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the first Women in Technology session of 2017. My name is Serpil Bayraktar. I'm the program lead for VET. I'm also a principal engineer here at Cisco in Chief Technology and Architecture Office. The idea of editing Wikipedia articles for technical women has been in my mind for a few years now. In 2013, two colleagues of mine, Carlos Pignataro and Ranjani Ram, uh, mentioned that they wanted to do a Wikipedia editathon and wondered if WIT would be a good forum to do it. But at the time, none of us had the experience or the expertise to run a Wikipedia editathon, so we had to put the project on the side. Uh, however, I love the idea of each of us contributing to this big knowledge base that's accessed by millions of people across the world. I love the idea of me editing an article or adding something new that will inspire a little girl somewhere in the world. And that kept the project alive in my mind. The breakthrough for doing this event came in uh, when another colleague of mine, Monique Morrow, introduced me to Rosie Stevenson Bernays. Rosie is the 2016 Wikipedian of the Year and has been contributing to uh, Wikipedia since 2007 in numerous ways. One of those is, in fact, is the, she is the co-founder of the project, Wiki project called Woman in the Red. The objective of the project is to turn red links, meaning missing or incomplete articles about women, into blue ones, add them, complete them. And she and I discussed about doing this for technical women. In this workshop, she's going to teach us how to author a Wikipedia article and what to do what is the right way to do it. And she and I both invite you all to help us reduce the gender gap in Wikipedia for technology. With that, I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce Rosie. Thank you. Serpo, thank you so very much, not just for introducing me, but for having Wikipedia here at Cisco. I'd like to make one other introduction, James Hare, who is joining me with what we're going to do today, which is going to be a brief presentation about uh, Wikipedia and how to edit Wikipedia, and then we're going to do some hands-on work and actually improve articles and create an article. Okay, sounds like fun? All right, so let's see, how close are we to being Ready to go?
Clark Potter at Cornell did a presentation yeah. on Chris. Yeah, present that. <laughs> I think we're set. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. If you have a laptop and you want to go to the Wikipedia meetup page for this event, here's the URL. I think this was also sent to you in the invitations that you received, maybe via email, but in case, in case you didn't have access to it previously, um, I'll wait a moment here while you go ahead and type this into your browser. When I say a Wikipedia meetup page, I mean that on Wikipedia, we organize various events, lots of different events. And so here you can see that this event is um, showing up as being under the city of San Jose, the event Cisco, and I chose to name it with January 2017, thinking that in the future, in 2017, maybe we'll do some additional events here, another event on. Um, Looks like we've got people typing. Good. Okay. Are we there in that? Let's see what comes up. Two. Four. Okay. Let's go. What are we doing here? Well, imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. That's what we're doing. Nothing less. <laughs> this is a picture of Jimmy Wales, the co-founder of Wikipedia. Let's start by talking about Wikipedia and gender. So, 1957, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Rodriguez um, created a, um, a, a dictionary or an encyclopedia, if you will, um, for Venezuela, and I have that book, and I went through it and started counting to see how many of the biographies in that book were about women. And when I was going through the A's and then the B's, I was really kind of put off because there were so few. When I was finished, I saw that it was 3.6%. So, 1957, Encyclopedia about Venezuela, 3.6% about Women. Fast forward. November 2014, English language Wikipedia. It was about the beginning of time when we really started um, looking at the percentages of biographies that were about women versus men. So Wikipedia was founded in 2001. It took about 13 years where we kind of knew that there were far fewer um, biographies about women than men, but we didn't know exactly how many they were. But some, something like November 2014, we, we figured it out. We, we figured out that we were at slightly more than 15%. And now, January 2017, because of the efforts of many people who are trying to change this systemic bias, if you will, we're up to 16.82%. Now, you might be thinking, as I'm thinking, I'm not impressed. Uh, it's, it's still a very low number. But those of you who know statistics better than I do probably will understand that this is still quite a jump. This is still a very huge improvement over what it was a year or two years ago. So, that said, let's talk about how to decide if someone is notable, a biography is notable, and we can go ahead and create an article. Let me start by telling you this appears to be more complicated than it really is. And before I go further, let me encourage you, if and when you start editing Wikipedia, I'm guessing you're reading things on Wikipedia, but when you start editing, please be bold. So here we go, don't be put off. Basic criteria. You can see the yellow highlights tell you things like, we use secondary sources. So what do I mean by that? We're not going to use some, we're not going to refer to someone's LinkedIn or Facebook. We're going to look at secondary sources. We're going to look at the depth of coverage about the person. 
We might use primary sources. For example, if someone has a um, official website, but if the information on the official website is also found in a secondary source, we're going to cite the secondary source versus the primary. If someone is notable for a single event, something that just happened once, they probably aren't going to be considered notable. However, if they won a significant award or honor, like they are one of the women in uh, international women in technology laureates, that would be sufficient. If there's an enduring historical record about that person, that would be sufficient. I mentioned academics here next because academics, it, it, there might be some overlap between women in technology and women academics. And so you can see things here I highlight. Use independent, reliable sources. If there's an academic award or honor, if they're a fellow of the IEEE, if they're the chief editor of a journal that is um, of significant importance, uh, significant enough importance, yes, then they are probably considered notable. But it's one thing to be notable and not have the reliable sources to back that. Let me use an example. 500 years ago, there were a lot of male politicians. There were a lot of male generals there were men in cloth, religious men. And somebody probably wrote something about those men. So 500 years ago, there's a historical record about those people, right? Less so about women, because women 500 years ago probably weren't the politicians or the generals. There were women of the cloth, but they may not have had that coverage the way that a gentleman might have been and become a part of the historical record. Another way of kind of thinking about that historical record, think 500 years ago, Nunavut, Canada. You know, Northern Canada. Now, I believe 500 years ago, there were notable women and men in Nunavut, Canada. But is there a historical record about those people pre-European contact? No. We've probably lost all record, if there were a record, of who those people were and what it is that they did. And I know, in my bones, I know that there were people who did things, but if there's no reliable source, they're not going to get on Wikipedia. Because this is today's encyclopedia, our encyclopedia, and we have to have a reliable source to put somebody in here. So, uh, reputable tertiary sources, etc. primary sources, use with caution. Systemic bias. So I could spend a long time on this, but I won't. Suffice it to say that what we've covered here is that you might be notable, but if you don't have the reliable sources to support that you're notable, then you don't and you don't end up being in a position for someone to create the article about you. Or if it is created, then it might be deleted. And there might be lengthy conversations or short conversations about that. So most of us, though we try to be bold, take caution with, uh, with this. What, what happens then is that we are dealing with a systemic bias, that men, more men than women, are writing articles on Wikipedia, are creating the articles about men, and since there's so few women who are doing it, we end up with this um, this issue of having so few women represented there, both in terms of who the editors are and the articles that we're creating. We need you. I love this. It is not women's inferiority that has determined their historical insignificance. It is their historical insignificance that has doomed them to inferiority. Let's talk about articles. If you went to the article on Salman Rushdie or anybody else, you're going to see a few things. Let's go over them here. Wikidata is a repository, a sister project, if you will, of Wikipedia, 
where we have a repository of data. And the person's Wikidata item you can see would be linked here. The lead paragraph, you can see a discussion link to the person's discussion page. You can talk about this article or any other article by clicking on talk. You can see there's an edit button, there's a view history button, and then we call this an info box, if you will, which is kind of at a glance what this article is about. If you scroll to the very, very bottom of the Solomon Rushdie article or any other article, now this is what's going to be at the bottom. There's going to be some external links. So links that aren't within Wikipedia, but links to maybe an official website and so on. Some related media, meaning things like sister projects, Wikimedia Commons, Wikiquote. There are some nav boxes, some, so we can navigate with, let's say, all of his works are listed in this box if we were to open it. And then you can see we categorize our articles. This is really important. Because if we are categorizing articles about women's biographies, someone someday, some academician, is going to be able to use this information to find the 15 women poets in Ghana. If there are 15, if there are 15 articles about um, Ghanaian women poets. Uh, Wikipedia is a wiki. Anybody can edit it. And everything you do is saved. It never goes away. Now, it is true that some things can be um, made invisible to the majority of the viewers. But for the most part, everything regarding an article of history, you can see. You can see who did it, whether it was an IP address or if it was someone who had logged in. Last but not least, I said that there's a top page for every article where we don't argue about um, uh, whatever the article is, be it Salman Rushdie or Donald Trump, but we talk about the, the structure of the article and the facts that are presented there. And that's what this looks like. Okay, basics of editing. So I've given you a link to the meetup page. And that meetup page um, gives you the same information we're going to cover right now. That uh, Wikipedia is a wiki. Anyone can edit it. Uh, wiki wiki comes from buses in Hawaii, which were meant to be quick buses from the airport to uh, downtown Honolulu. Uh, nothing can ever be destroyed. And hyperlinks between Wikipedia articles keeps you within Wikipedia. You cannot edit Wikipedia if you don't understand these policies. Neutral point of view, notability, verifiability, no original research, assume good faith of all of the other editors, and avoid conflict of interest. You might want to start with these. These same links appear in the meetup page that I gave you access to earlier. I'm just repeating them here instead of starting to show you what a cheat sheet looks like, a wiki markup. So we don't have time for that. But you want to get to that cheat sheet, it's the first link. By the way, this presentation, um, I will send a link to it to Circle, but I will also add it to Wikipedia Commons so that forever anyone can have access to it. Once you start editing, you might want to know, are there helpful, friendly people out there? And I'm giving you links to three places to find them. One is the Tea House, a place where new editors can go to chat with other new editors and with hosts, people who can assist with questions. We have projects, wiki projects we call them, and there's one for women in technology. And then we have a broad umbrella project called Women in Red, that Circle mentioned I'm a co-founder of. And our focus is women's biographies, women's works, women's issues, broadly construed. Account creation, are we ready? Yes. So, um, James, I don't know if you've created any of the accounts or if you've got the list of names and such, but if, who has an account? <coughs> oh my gosh, awesome. Who would like to create an account? Okay, 
Um, um, so we were passing around a sheet to basically. Thank you. Uh, so we were passing around a sheet basically to sign in. Um, the idea is that if you don't have an account yet, it's easiest if we create one for you because when you have a lot of people in a room like this, they don't like having a bunch of account creations coming from the same place. It's an anti-spam measure. Uh, so if you did sign into that sheet, all we need is the username you want and an email address. We can create the accounts for you and the password is sent to your email. Like, if you already have an account, then that's perfect. I did it while it's here. Perfect. All right, so if we get that sheet over to James, I think he'll be able to jump in and start creating those. Um, let's keep going. So why register an account? First of all, individuals only. You're not gonna create an account in the name of Cisco or the San Diego Public Library. Uh, no institutional accounts, no share. The advantage is you become a member of the community um, we can talk to you versus if you're an IP address, and you can have um, access to uh, developing preferences and what type of privacy measures you might want. Somebody asked me uh, in the last half hour, uh, when I create an account, should I create an, if I'm a woman, should I create an account where I, first of all, indicate that I am a woman, maybe by the name that I use, or should I even use my real name or should I use a name that um, doesn't distinguish me one way or another as being a woman? Let's say something like user laptop. So uh, this is what I want to say about that. Um, when I first created an account on Wikipedia, I used my full name, Rosie Stevenson. And four or five, six months in, I Googled myself one day. You know, we all do that sometimes. And all the talk page posts that I had on different project pages, they all showed up. And I felt extremely exposed to the world. And so I asked to have my um, account renamed. And you can do that on Wikipedia. And so I renamed it to, I dropped the last six letters of my surname. Stevenson is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N. So my username is Rosie Step. So just Rosie and then the first four letters of the surname. So now when I Google Rosie Stevenson goodnight, you know, Rosie Step doesn't show up there and I feel a little better. But I have self-identified in a way as being a woman. I will say that I have a user page and there I, I say my full name, I say the city where I live and other things about me. But am I influencing you to do the same? No. Each of you needs to give this some thought and decide what is best for you. Do you want to use something like Mop Top? Or do you want to use your full name, part of your name, or something else? Have I ever been harassed on Wikipedia? So short answer is zero. Never. Not once. But I cannot say that every woman has had the same experience. Having said that, it's up to you, as I said, make a decision and you can always change it down the road. Once you've created your account, I want you to be aware of something called conflict of interest. And this means on your user page, you may want to self-disclose that you work for Cisco. If you're going to edit articles that have something to do with maybe the technology world and that you have not edited the article about Cisco. No conflict of interest then. However, if you do not want to edit anything to do with women in technology or Cisco in particular, you don't have to expose yourself and say that you work for Cisco. It's only if you start, uh, if you do something that's in that field, but I will caution you, you yourself should not do that. You should not edit an article about someone um, who works at Cisco or about Cisco or any of its subsidiaries. Okay? We're done with the presentation, folks. Are we ready to get started here? Are we ready to start editing? Or do we want to ask questions? Or do we have questions that have come in? Yeah. How can you do it?
Okay, for this, we're going to need seven, one at a time, we're going to need seven volunteers who want to edit Wikipedia. And I'm going to ask James to come up here, and I'll walk around with this and talk it through. James will be helping the person, and the person's going to be using my Mac. We have seven examples ready to go with simple tasks, and you won't be by yourself. You're going to be with a very experienced editor, the Secretary of the Media District of Columbia. So do I have a volunteer from the group? Rosie, do you mind if we have that question real quick? Okay, real quick. So two things. Uh, I already changed, uh, made my username. I put my name in there. So if you could tell us how we can change that. And secondly, you mentioned secondary sources. What are those secondary sources that you link to or mention that vanish? You know, that I'm sure that happens sometimes. Uh, like LinkRot? I don't know about, but like maybe that website's not up anymore. So, you know, just yes. the authenticity of the... So, Good questions. First of all, you can't by yourself change your username. You will have to put in a request and someone with certain rights and privileges will have to make that change for you. So we won't be able to deal with the change today. Um, and as far as uh, the art, the you link to something that then becomes a 404, but I think the 404 is gonna go away. Um, the Internet Archive is working on that along with Wikipedia. We're looking to store those what I'll call external links, those citations, so that you will not in the future encounter that problem on Wikipedia. Once it's been linked, and if it was a good link at one time, it will forever be there. We're not quite there yet, but that's where we're going, through the Internet Archive, through our relationship with the Internet Archive and the Wayback Machine. Is, do you want to add anything to that? Because I think, you're, I think you may have been working with them. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have anything to add uh, with, with uh, specific regard to that. That's uh, correct. Uh, in the future, I'd like to have it so that links will be archived within one minute of the page being saved, but that's a ways away at this point. Um, also, that sheet uh, with people who wanted to create accounts, where is that sheet? Is it outside? Okay. All right. Do we have someone who is ready to go and wants to be our first um, volunteer? And by the way, when I say volunteer, we're all volunteers. We're, we're not paid to do what we're doing. We, we came here on our own. Our time isn't paid for. Our transportation isn't paid for. Wikipedians are all volunteers. We give it of ourselves because this is what we want to do. All right, so I'm looking for a volunteer. Come on. Somebody. Perfect. All right. The first article we're going to work on is Suzanne Albers. We're going to expand the lead paragraph. So let me get out of the way. going to take a moment for a technical moment and then we're going to look at this article Susan Albers so a German theoretical computer scientist and professor of computer science at Technische Universität Munich and so why I chose this article is that I would like us to expand the lead the lead is the opening paragraph Read should say something that summarizes the rest of the article. So if we're looking at this, you can see there's only one sentence, and surely we can come up with something else. For example, you can see that in 1993, she received the Otto Hahn Medal from the Max Planck Society. In 2008, she won a different prize, and so on. 
And so these things should move in, should be included in the lead. And so we're going to go ahead and do that as soon as we get logged in. Or for the sake of time, do you want to just go ahead and... Are you on the sound? So we're just going to swap our screens for a second here, so that... One second. So let's talk through what that second sentence is going to say, and then we can have our first volunteer just go ahead and type it in. I would say, I would suggest that the second sentence in that lead would say something like, uh, she received the Otto Hand Medal, and the Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz Prize. She, or she is a recipient of the Otto Hahn Medal and the Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz Prize. So you can see while I'm thinking out loud and the first thing I said, if I had typed the first thing that I said and hit save, I would then just go in and change it again and hit save again. So, no problem if the first thing you do isn't exactly what you want. You can go ahead and change it, and so can somebody else. So there was a question about dueling editors. Okay, so let me answer the question about dueling editors and then we'll edit this article. So yes, it is possible that more than one person wants to edit an article, especially something that's contentious. Let's say uh, Donald Trump, just because we know that he will be our next president. And it is possible that at the same time, multiple people are trying to edit. Well, first of all, we said earlier, assume good faith. But talk pages are the place where we should be taking these conversations. So if there is um, some point of fact that is being disputed, instead of arguing about it through the uh, quick changes, quick edits that we're doing on the article page, Actually dealing with it on the talk page is the best place to go. If, if it is not resolved there, we actually have areas on Wikipedia where people resolve issues. Where they, uh, a group of administrators first looks at things, and then we have an arbitration committee that does it as well. But um, I think the key point here is to remember, assume good faith first, use the talk page second. All right, looks like we're in. So. What we want to do is edit this page, and what we want to do is add a second sentence in the lead. And that is to say that uh, Albers is the recipient of, and then the two awards that are listed further down in her article under awards and honors. Can we go ahead and get started with that? Yes, yeah, so editing Wikipedia is very easy. Um, so just click edit source there. So there are two editing modes on Wikipedia. There's, um, you can edit the underlying source, which is a kind of markup system they have. There's also a visual editor where it looks exactly like the article. And you have to enable it separately because it's a data feature, but uh, you can get it started editing. You, you'll get this prompt when you're editing for the first time. Or you can switch to the visual editor. No, it's all right. OK, so this is what uh, editing the source looks like. Uh, that top thing is the box you see on the side. It's a lot of structured data, I guess, in the ways of, like, usually when you open an article like this, you'll see a lot of stuff up top there. And uh, you want to actually like, get to the paragraph and scroll down a little. And there is the first. Now, now our goal at the moment is to add a second sentence to that introduction, because Usually the lead section is supposed to summarize the article. So 
if you search say something in the way that's already in the rest of the article, you don't have to like dig up sources or anything like that. It's just a summary of what's already written and already attributed to a source. So what do you think the second sentence of that article should be? So we kind of came up with that while you were um, working on the WebEx. Um, should we say that she is a recipient of the and then there are two different awards. The awards are listed here. The Otto Hahn Medal and the Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz Prize. So we can go ahead and add that right here. Yeah, let's just type she is a recipient of. Uh, let's see, no, we need to be, can we get her up here, James? Mm -hmm. She's, I think, typing here, but we want her up here. Okay, so if you can get your cursor up there, there we go. Of the Otto Hahn Medal. and the Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz Prize. Now once you've typed that in, before you click save, you want to put a note in the edit summary. So if you scroll down uh, to the bottom below the Thank you. Thank you. All right, do you see this edit summary? In here, we're going to summarize the um, change that was made. Um, you can be as brief as you like. Um, using the word expand, lead, or two words uh, is sufficient. Expand, lead, and then. And then you can click save changes. Click save changes. There you go. And when you're adding it, sometimes it does this, uh, particularly if you have a new account, uh, they want to make sure they're a real person, not a spammer. Do you have a Wikipedia account? Yes. You do. And are you on WebEx? No. <laughs> we'll get our own WebEx. <laughs> we are an expert on WebEx. Is it in the meeting? A question. Judy. Do you need to get the person's approval to put them on the Wikipedia? Is it like the practice? Great question. The question was, do you need to get someone's approval if they're a living person? The answer, no. You don't. However, if you are a living person and you feel you would be harmed by having a Wikipedia article, you can contact the foundation and have a conversation with them. That doesn't guarantee that the article is going to come down. But you can have a conversation. If it's not the whole article you want to be brought down, but you want something changed, then you can also have that conversation as well. For example, if something that's in the article is actually not a fact, you can dispute that. Again, that would be a conversation you could, because conflict of interest, you can't edit your article. So I have an article. There's an article about me on Wikipedia. Somebody created it. Someone else has edited it, someone else has updated it, but I can't make changes on there. Even if I know that something is incorrect 
I think that there is at least one thing incorrect on there, date of birth. <laughs> I can't change it. You're much younger. <laughs> so, um, good question. Any other questions while we uh, make the change? Yes. So, uh, Andrew Jackson, controversial in my communication. Hi, Andrew Jackson. Controversial uh, inauguration. He was the first one to have an inaugural ball. Anyway, I go to the website. So certain pages are semi protected The question is, um, Andrew Jackson's Wikipedia page is semi-protected. What does that mean? It means that there have been some contentious edits, and an administrator, a CISOP, has made it so that only confirmed editors can edit that page. That um, kind of uh, tag on that page can last for a long period of time, for a short period of time, three days, sometimes they're on for a week, sometimes for a month, and sometimes they're on indefinitely. A confirmed, a confirmed editor is someone who can edit some protected articles, or you can be auto-confirmed, which happens automatically after some combination of four days and ten edits or something like that. And if, you can also be manually confirmed, but I don't think that happens as often. Basically, there are different protection levels of articles in it, and a lot of articles are semi-protected, which as Rosie described, it means that there have been a lot of contentious edits. Usually these are very um, high visibility articles um, that get a lot of vandalism, so they put a little layer of protection so that if you're going to edit, you should at least have an account. Thankfully, you will all have accounts, but they might be a bit new, but if you wait a few days and make a few edits beforehand, then you'll reach that threshold to be auto-confirmed and you can edit those in particular. So the vast majority of articles are totally open for anyone to edit, but you have those select few that are so unique. And then you have a very, very small amount that are fully protected that only administrators can edit, but that's exceedingly rare. Alright, I think we're, we're on with Nina Armenta. And we're going to make a different kind of change on Nina. Um, so what we're going to do on Nina is we're going to connect her to um, something called Wikidata, which, like I said, is a repository of um, structured data, but not just one type of structured data. What we're trying to do is become the repository of all structured data that exists. So from things like the VIAF, virtual, Yes, and the OCLC, and all the others that exist out there. So in order to make that change, do you see where the external links are? We're going to go right, below. we're going to click, can you show her how to edit this article? We're going to click, and we're going to add authority control. So. So the next thing we're going to do is add a, um, add a template that adds an authority control box. <coughs> so Wikipedia has a very fancy templating system where basically you create little templates and you can embed them in articles and that way a lot of formatting is centralized. You don't have to reinvent it for the article. This gives Wikipedia a nice um, consistent appearance. Um, this thing is a, one of the many boxes we have at the bottom of articles for authority controls where, you know, different people all with the same name you have one authority, you have a standardized number for them, and this adds a box to the bottom of that article that includes all of those numbers and letters and such. And, but because the information is on Wikidata, you don't actually have to add them yourself, they're already in Wikidata. So, what she's doing right now is just adding um, the syntax for adding a, a template is a curly brace, curly brace, and the template, curly brace, curly brace. Sometimes you have parameters, but in this case, you don't need it. You just need to say, give me the authority control box, and that's all it is. And um, so you add that, you click, uh, you add your edit summary, saying that you're adding the authority control box, and you save, and this again. Yeah, it goes away after you've made a few edits. Um, it also comes up a lot if you're adding links to an article. 
because Wikipedia, like any other website, has to deal with spam, so it has some mechanisms to deal with that. But it's just annoying because you get to be saving a, saving a page and oh, the capture show up. <laughs> Voila! And there it is. And as you can see, all she did is just say, give me the authority control box, and there are the authority <coughs> control numbers right there. Now I'm going to have you click on the Wikidata link, which is going to be right around there. Yep. Now, if you're interested in structured click. data, this is the Wikidata entry. And if you scroll down, you can see that somebody for this person's entry has put in the Mathematics Genealogy Project ID number, the VIAF ID number, and then when you click back on Nina Armenta, you can click on it. You can see those numbers. This is, this is really important, folks, because this is how we tie things together. You know that we're about, six, Wikipedia is about 16 years old. But I take the long view. When I say the long view, I'm talking not 15 years from now. I'm talking 50 years, 150, 500 years from now. This is what's going to connect um, the different articles. And so that's why we do this. So thank you, Favia, for, for being our second volunteer. Do I have a third volunteer? Ah, a question. So uh, what if the, uh, what if there's like nothing listed in the data item, uh, we just be blank? And if anybody adds in the future, I'm just happy. And uh, if you're interested in structured data in general, Wikidata has an open API that you can just pull information from it whenever you want. You don't even need a key or anything. You just can take, you just pull the information. You can edit it too, just like Wikipedia. It's really a wonderful thing if you're into structured data. Do we have a third volunteer? We do, right here. And uh, can we have the assistance with WebEx? Do we have any questions from the floor? Well, here we go. Good question. You said that uh, if I have a Wikipedia page for myself, somebody added a Wikipedia page, I cannot go and edit it. But how is that controlled? I can you create a new account with the new How is it? Excellent question. So if you can create an account with any kind of funky name, how will anybody know that you created the user page about yourself or that you edited it down the road? Well, I guess the short answer is no. People won't know. Um, but we ask this of you. We ask you to abide by these policies. So best practice, don't do it. And also, just on a practical level, people usually aren't good at concealing it. Like, people will write such effusive marketing type language, and we're like, this person is probably themselves or someone very closely connected to them. So, but if you do write a perfect article under a pseudonym and it's about you, but no one has ever, no one has any way of finding out. Then congratulations, but <laughs> the likely, but we but Wikipedia administrators have seen a lot of this stuff before, and so the likelihood of it just succeeding is not very high. But that is a good question. Okay. Jillian Arnold, so let's go ahead and fix a typo. Do you see the typo in the first sentence? Active you. Active. Okay. Can you assist her with the editing part of the James? So somebody wrote, Jillian Arnold has been actively, and they misspelled actively. No harm, no foul. That happens. Happens. All right, so you had it, see that. Excellent. Uh, scroll down to the bottom. Uh, right here, edit something. Just 
Then I'll just go through what you did with it. Congratulations. <laughs> and there it is. The, art, the typo has been fixed. You have saved Wikipedia. Thank you. All right. In the interest of time, I don't think we'll do any more of the small edits. We're going to create an article. We're going to create an article about a Cisco woman. Her name, Susie Wheat. Does anyone know Susie Wheat? All right. If you can put me back on the WebEx. So one of the things we'll do once we get me on WebEx is we've already found some links that have determined that she's notable, but we're going to show you why she's notable. So that you understand why we might create an article on Susie Wee versus maybe someone else. And what I'll probably do is start by showing you another name that was shared with it as a possible name of someone. And we'll take a look at why that person um, doesn't appear to meet the threshold for notability and why Susie Wee does appear to meet the threshold for notability. But remember, it's about the sourcing. It's about the sourcing. Do we have a reference for that? Um, it doesn't mean that somebody isn't notable, but if we don't have a reference for that, and if we don't have an appropriate reference for that, we, we can't include it. Okay? So am I back on? Can anyone create an article also, not just in it, or do you need extra privileges to create an article? The question, do we need extra privileges to create an article? Nope. You can, your mom can, your daughter can, your cousin, your friend. You don't feel like doing it? No worries. Talk about it to someone who might then be influenced and they'll do it. One more question. Can you create an article for somebody international? Like you can create an article regarding anybody born in 1850, born today, as long as there are reliable sources to support the notability of that person. All right. You're on the Okay, sorry. I am going to set this down while I use two hands. Yes, I will narrate Rosie's experience with editing. So today we are going to create a new article. Wikipedia has over 5 million articles, and today we are going to add one more to the collection. All right, so here's one that was suggested, and let's look at this suggested one. Um, Deborah knows spoke and why we're not going to do it. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, you can hear me. All right, let's look at Deborah Mills Schofield. When we, when we Google her, the first thing we see is her official website. Do we see that? Is everyone used to that up there? And next we see her. And next we see her LinkedIn. And we've already talked about that we can't use social media. So her Twitter account, that's out too. What do you see next? Business Innovation Factory. Not sure about that. Let's look at it. So this might be good. 
what is this business innovation factor? Let's take a look who's sure that I can figure out easily who is this behind this, but I can tell you that if they're having a, um, a conference coming up in 2017, this is probably a good website. We could probably use this. He also writes articles on other business if you love this. The second thing we see here is Harvard Business Review. Now my interest is Let's see what we see here. Do we have information about her or do we have her um, article? So I'm trying to find out if this tells me anything about her. Not easily. Maybe I'd have to hunt and search. Looking for low hanging fruit. How about um, innovation excellence? Again, I'm looking for something about her that's going to help me with information about her, where she maybe went to school or the awards she got. And looking here, I'm not, at least quickly, I'm not finding it. Instead, I'm finding articles that she might have contributed here, author archives, if you will, if you see that. So let's go to somebody else. Exactly. So um, beyond the specific requests, you can see that that's kind of at the top of the screen. I posted here the laureates of the Women in Technology International Hall of Fame. By virtue of being a laureate of this organization, the person is considered notable. And within this group of, of laureates, I, I checked, well, is there a Cisco woman in this group? And yes, there was. Here she is, Susie Lee. And so we've got some um, sources about her. Here's one. You can see here's a second. I've already. Um, uh, put tabs up for them. And so I'm going to go ahead and start the article on Susie Lee. It's going to be hard for me to talk and write. I could try, but that's what I'm going to use James for, okay? All right, so Rosie is getting to work uh, starting this article here, and uh, she has tabs open with the sources. And the sources are important. As we said earlier, you need sources to demonstrate that the person is notable and also the information needs to come from already published sources. And uh, so she, so writing an article on particularly the source editor is just a matter of opening up the page, seeing whether it exists. If it doesn't exist, you just click create and you get, you know, earlier we saw articles with boxes already filled in. This is a blank slate. So, Seems like Rosie has done this before. <laughs> yeah, so um, what she's doing right now is she's just adding the basics. Susie Lee is something and then the end of the sentence. So she's Vice President and te Chief Technology and Experience Officer of Collaboration and Communication at Cisco. And uh, at the bottom, she's already done some of the housekeeping. She added a references section, very important. Um, with the reference list, that's another one of those templates. Um, references on Wikipedia, you put them in line, and you don't have to worry about numbering or any of that. The numbering is automatic, and they just automatically show up at the bottom. And um, she is using a tool to generate the citation. So that citations on Wikipedia are a whole universe under themselves, but if you use tools, they do the work for you. It's so much easier that way. So. She is doing her diligence and, right, and um, fit, recording where she got her information. And 
So it should include like, the name of the website, the link to it, all valuable information to keep track of. Question. Yes. Um, I think the, the question is out whether um, bio, conference biographies and biographies from the website are reliable sources from the company, right? Uh, from their employees. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use them to establish notability because the idea of notability is that you are mentioned that you, there are sources about you from third-party sources, as in someone you don't have an immediate connection to, like. If multiple publications I had no connection to wrote about me for whatever reason, then that might establish my notability. But if my employer wrote about me, well, big deal, it's my employer. Like, of course, they're going to write something. But can you use it as a source of information? Maybe. Depends on what kind of information. But I wouldn't use that to establish notability. And conference files, I guess, depends on the conference, really. I'm ready. I'm ready. Really, like, here's show preview. Mm -hmm. Susie Wee is an American technology expert. She is the vice president, chief technology, oops, chief technology, and experience officer of collaboration and communication. Quite a title at Cisco Systems. You can see it got a reference from, for that from an organization that is of repute. And so let's save it. Yes, and when creating an article, sometimes all you, all you really need is one sentence. It's not that. Uh, the article you're referencing is from 2012. How do you know, or do you need to confirm that that is still for the position of the system? Is that according to the top? Yes, you should. Okay. And so it, I can tell you by the end of today or by the end of the weekend, there will probably be others who have jumped in here. And have corrected the title if they have a reference for that. And we might have a reference for that. But according to this, at least in 2012. So why don't we use that point and um, clarify? In, this is from 2012. So how about in 2012, she was. And uh, Rosie, uh, so articles are often sorted into categories, and you can just directly within the article click a plus button, and uh, you get a text box, you can enter the name of another category, and if you enter the name of a valid category, you hit save, the category is inserted right there. So I'm going to expand the article. I can't, paraf I can't do close paraphrase, but I can use information, and so I'm going to, um, I'm going to use the information from these, this uh, one or two sentences. You can see that what I've just um, brought in here that I'm going to start editing starts with Susie. We, we don't do that on Wikipedia. We don't use people's first names when we refer to them a second time. The first time we refer to them, we would use the full name or the full name that we would know. In this case, we only know Susie B. Perhaps there's a middle name and we don't know what that is. So the first thing I will say is we <coughs> was the co-editor of the Jake Standard Someone else is going to come in and they're going to fix this. Because you can see I've taken out information that's probably pertinent. Someone else is going to, who knows how to rephrase and use the right um, technology words, I'm going to let them go ahead and do that. She was formerly an associate. Also served as an associate editor.
Okay, folks, I'm going to rely on you and your friends today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. You need to go in here and improve this article. Let's use another reference. So it looks like Susie Lee was one of the innovators under 35 in 2002 um, under the MIT Technology Review. So something like... <laughs> I would say something like in 2002, we became a innovators under 35 laureate. MIT, uh, MIT Technology Review, named we as an innovator under 35 for it. When we, when we write the articles, Uh, the question is, um, when writing about the fact that she received the award, do you just say that she received the award and then point to the website, or do you say why she received the award? Um, if this were expanded, we would say why she received it. What we're trying to do in the short amount of time we have is to make a statement that she received it, and then rely on others to go in and explain um, more about that. So, MIT Technology Review. Is there an article, the article about that? I just put Ricky Markup around it. Let's see. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's good when writing Wikipedia articles to link to other articles, because that's how you build out this web of information. And if you add links around the article and the article doesn't exist, then you get a red link. But in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with a red link. It's just an article that hasn't been written yet. So one of the categories I put was Cisco systems, but maybe there's something like Cisco people. That would be better. And look, lo and behold, there is. There's a category called Cisco people. And we're going to change the category that we have for Miss Wee. to Cisco people. <clears throat> Why not have both? Uh, because the Cisco people is a subcategory of Cisco systems. So it would be superfluous to have them. American women, not, not very descriptive. Are there things, if I click here, that, I, that will help me? How about American women by occupation? Um, is she an engineer? Is she, which one of these would you say? So I should click on that. American Women Engineers. Let's go ahead and use that. And let's change American Women to be American Women Engineers. Now, I think I saw something about uh, education in one of these articles. Let's add that.
you see how I'm trying to change the words so it's not, uh, first of all, I, I don't want to just um, pull in the exact words from, from a reference. And this is pretty close paraphrasing, but there are only so many ways you can say that we receive certain degrees from a certain um, institution. <laughs> You will get better and better at this the more you do this. But think back to your college days when you were writing your term papers. <laughs> so where did I get this from? It was from one of these references. I think the IEEE put like this insert, and there's a you can see that this will link to that reference also. When I scroll down, expanding article. Actually, how about if I do this? Education. Show preview. Ah, very good question. Do you need to have a reference for every sentence that you write? Uh, the short answer, no. Anything contentious? Yes. And the more the better, so having two references for one fact is good, but at the very least, every paragraph needs to have a link to a reliable source. So if you have written a paragraph of, let's say, five sentences, and you have one reference, that's all you've planted there, but if I were to go and click on that reference, and there is information in the paragraph, let's say, about Jane Doe's education, and there's nothing in that reference that I just read about education. I'm going to wonder, how did that stuff get in there? I will wonder, did you find it on another website or in a book, or did you make it up yourself? So it's best everything that needs to be cited, just cite it. Cite more rather than cite less. All right, now that we've ended that, I will add some more categories, at least one. Um, So this links her to lots of other alumni. I think um, we'll add one more thing, a tag, to make this a slide. <coughs> and then we'll say that this is as much as we're going to work on her today. Um, a stub is a uh, very short article of less than a paragraph usually. And we like tying up articles and stuff so that to invite people to work on them more. And um, usually we specify what kind of stub it is. Um, what I usually do is I just say it's a stub. I just use the generic stub template and someone who cares about the specificity usually makes it more precise. But it's good that Rosie get it precisely the first time. So you can see this is a stub article regarding US engineers. And you know what? If we click on that, You can see there's lots of them. Uh, looks like 617. Questions? I have a question. Seems like when you're creating a new wiki page, so you should be aware of the tab, right? Because it seems like there's a tab out there. So the different tabs, like ref list or um, the other tabs, so the creator should be aware of that. So when a new wiki page was being created, so it seems like there is no template for it. So that means you should be aware of the different tags which you typed in there. Yes, good question. So when you start from scratch, there aren't any templates. How do you know basically what you're doing? Um, so let me tell you what I did. I looked at an article on something that was similar. My first article was about Book League of America. So let me tell you about that. I didn't start by thinking I'm gonna write an article about Book League of America. I was one day just Googling stuff, 
and I collect books by this publisher called Book League of America. And when I Googled it, there was no Wikipedia article. And I thought, you know what? It must have been a typo on my part because everything's in Wikipedia. This was 2007. <laughs> no, there was no Wikipedia article about it. And so I thought, you know, my son had been in the Peace Corps and he had showed me how he had edited the Wikipedia article about the city that he was in when he was stationed in Ukraine. And I thought, you know what? If my son Sean could figure out how to edit Wikipedia, I bet I can too. And so to create this article about Book League of America, I knew it was a publisher. I looked at another article about another publisher. And I just used everything I saw to create the article that I created. So let me show you. We all start somewhere. Three forty three in the afternoon. June 4th, 2007, I typed that. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I, I didn't know, you can see there are no categories, there were no links, reference links to anything. I, I didn't know what I was doing, but I did that. And then, yes? Why was it important to you? At that particular moment when I did this, I just thought, well, I'm going to see if I can do it. Oh, oh not, not really Wikipedia. Why was the book club of the Book League of America? It, ah, why was Book League of America notable? It was a um, publisher of some renown in its day. And the article on it today looks like, looks like that. There's this stuff about it. So, you know, it, it, it was of some renown at some point. Historically, it was important. And so there was no article. Now there is an article about it. But uh, just what I want to say with that is you don't have to have a template to work off of. If you're going to write a biography, and that's what we've been talking about, find another biography of somebody who is somehow similar and just use that as a basis for starting. You only need one sentence to say that the person was notable, as long as you have that reference at the end of the sentence. The rest of it, the markup and such, you'll learn as you go along. You know, we, you know you'll know, you learn. It's not, it's really. I never took physics. Now I'm, I'm probably, I'm, yeah. I'm the oldest person in this room. I never took physics. I'm not a woman in technology in the way you would think of someone who might work at Cisco, but it's it's something we can learn how to do, and I'll learn how to edit Wikipedia. We had a question right here. At the top of some wiki pages, you'll see a little box that says this article has issues. Who creates that box? Mm -hmm. Great question. Some articles have little boxes on top that say that there's an issue with an article. And in fact, I think we saw one um, a couple of articles ago. And so first of all, who creates those templates? Um, you do, we do, I do, everybody does, anybody does. Volunteers do, we've created those templates. And we have a whole bunch of them. I don't know, let's say we have 30, maybe we have more than 30, and they can say that it needs more citations, that something is disputed, that maybe Article A should be merged with Article B. There's all sorts of them. We choose to put them up or not, to put that tag on top of an article, and then we, you, me, your sister, chooses to take that down if you think that it's no longer an issue. And it can be contentious. I can put that tag on there and you don't like it and you take that tag down and I don't like that you took it down and I put it back up and then I go to your talk page and I put a little nasty note, only I put a smiley face at the end so you can't really say that I was being nasty. 
You've heard stories about Wikipedia, I'm sure, and these things go on, but again, this is a good thing. But the short answer is, you do. I do, your sister does. Any of us do, all volunteers. Another question? How do we know which articles to edit and who and who should we write now? Is there a suggested list on Wikipedia? How do you know what to write about? Excellent question. If I had a dollar, I'd say, here's the dollar. Thanks for asking the question. So um, the short answer is either you know somebody or something that needs to have an article or you don't. But there are groups of us who try to compile these red lists of missing articles. You can see that, you know, we've kind of linked on this, clicked on this before. Classes. This community called Women in Red specializes in collecting lists of missing articles about women, women's works, and women's issues broadly construed. Do you see this, this word red list here? And you see all of these things? These are all lists of missing women. Choreographers, you ask? There's a list for that. Uh, Caribbean women? Yeah, there's a list for that. Women born before 1850? Or how about between 1850 and 1899, you ask? Yeah, uh -huh. there's, there's a list for that. And so one place to start is with these red lists that somebody's already compiled, and most of these already have references right next to them. So half of that work has already been done for you. I don't know how we're doing for time. Someone will stop us when we're going over. Yeah, we have a few more minutes. Yeah, so basically if you do pick up one of these articles and do it, so do you remove it from that uh, list that you showed? <clears throat> Great question. So who then removes it from there? So there's a bot that comes through and removes the, art, the link once, once the, there's an article about them. And sometimes it's not the bot. But it's you or me or your sister who comes through and removes it before the bot gets to it. Don't worry about removing the link once it's glued. Someone is going to do it. What about determining notability for things that are like objects, you know, like books, games, etc.? Same thing. There are various kinds of rules associated with different things. For example, geography. So it's implicit in Wikipedia if a place on planet Earth has a name and it's on a map that, we, that it can, it's considered notable enough to have an article. But regarding like, not geography, but actual things, um, there can be discussion about that. For example, all Simpson um, episodes all Simpson episodes have, almost all Simpson episodes have an article. Many of them do. <laughs> uh, sometimes, sometimes there's, sometimes people decide that all, all episodes of a TV show are articles, sometimes they decide only some of them are. We used to have articles on every Pokemon. That was a thing a while ago, but they decided, no, that's too much, and they consolidated a lot of them. But only the particularly famous ones have their own articles, though. And so there's discussion. There's discussion in the community, and it becomes the smaller community, so not the overarching Wikipedia community, but it might be just like English Wikipedia, and it might be just people who are working in anime or working in some subsection who have a discussion on what is notable and what isn't. And they make the decisions, and they change their mind five years later, 10 years later, 150 years from now, they might change their mind too. It's, a, it's open to discussion because we're all volunteers doing this. So right now, I would say just find like a book that I think is notable and put it on there. Yeah, yes, if you have reliable sources, yes, you can. 
What are reliable sources? Well, we went over that. So secondary sources. So like a book review? Book reviews. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're just about out of time before everybody leaves. I just want to thank you, Rosie and James, for coming today and giving this workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're very glad to be here, and I hope you're glad to see you. I hope everybody will go and edit something. Next month, we're doing containers. We're oh, by the oh, container X CEO, Fran, will be talking about the strategy. So back to technical. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.